Aha! We are talking about conscious uncoupling and the topic for this video is core values you want to anchor in your uncoupling experience. We function with core values, you know, the, these pillars of light and energy that we have inside of us that guide our choices. You know, some of them might be respect or love, fighting power, you know, the, uh, the, uh, the, the values that we have when we are coupling with somebody are very specific actually. We don't even realize sometimes that we're functioning with them, but when you are going into a conscious coupling, you know, you're consciously designing a relationship, you notice that those core values are very specific. And so when you are consciously uncoupling, you realize that there are certain values and certain qualities, certain agreements that you want to still anchor in the core of that relating, and uh, so that there is a harmonious transition. And here are some of the things that you can check, you know. Those are not a set of fixed values, okay? It's not like I have 10 or 20 exactly values that you have to anchor. It's more like bringing them to the surface and allowing you to decide if this is something you want to have in your relationship or not. So here we go. For instance, transparency, right? When you're in a couple and your partner asks you for a question, yeah, are you seeing somebody? Uh, is there somebody in your field that you are attracted to? You know, that's called transparency. If you answer truthfully, you're transparent in your relationship. It means that you can almost ask any question. There are no real secrets there. That's the idea, right? So when you are uncoupling, is transparency sustained? Suppose that your ex is seeing somebody and she doesn't want to tell you the details of what's happening there. Well, you're no longer in a relationship. So concerning transparency, it's a maybe. Some people will want to be transparent and be re revealing of everything that is happening and some people won't. Most of the times, it's more like a maybe. You can ask questions and the person, your ex might be free to reply or not. Another core value, respect. Absolutely yes, respect each other. You know, this is something to keep in mind. Love, peace, safety, yes. You want to be safe for each other. You know, if every time you arrive at uh, your ex's house, for instance, she attacks you or retaliates or enters into an argument, then it's not safe. It means that you cannot be in each other's presence. And if your goal is to be in harmony or to be able to function together, especially for instance, if you have children together or you are transitioning uh, or have a business together, or you still have some, you know, some ongoing thing, you live in the same social circle, you, have, you are very entangled in terms of social life, you know, you need to be able to create safety for each other. At least that's a possibility. If you are not able to create safety, then you live in unsafety. That's fine as well. But it creates lots of tension in your system and the possibility of, uh, you know, explosions and uh, drama, uh, anger, explosions and outbreaks is uh, potentially high. Um, <clears throat> Responsiveness, yes, it's encouraged. You know, if your ex sends you a message, be responsive to it. Hey, what's up? You know, don't ignore them because otherwise it's very hard to function. Uh, you know, this is what you would do with friends as well. So um, it's a good one to keep in mind. Um, freedom, yes, of course. Once you are no longer a couple, that's it. You are free to do what you want. You're no longer accountable to your ex. And uh, this freedom is complete. You know, it's like you are back to being um, in alignment with yourself and uh, you don't have to, yeah, to limit or to uh, compromise that, that freedom. Um, spaciousness, yes, spaciousness is very important. It means that if you, again, see your ex making, doing things or engaging in choices in new relationships, just be spacious enough to take it. It's very simple. And be spacious enough as well to give yourself the freedom to uh, not keep their controlling patterns in your field. Um, gratitude, yes, be grateful. Be grateful for all the experiences, all the past, the present, the future. Gratitude is a very positive value to have in your mind. Care, care for each other. Yes, as much as possible, you know, if. If your ex is attacking you, then it's very difficult to, to stay in connection in a caring way. But, you know, that's the ideal as well. It's a value that I think can be really sustained 
in, in that transition. Sympathy, uh, yes, inclusion, uh, yes, try to include them into, into your life. This one is a maybe more, more. It's like, for instance, if you have a party at your house and you know that your ex, you know, is it, is it appropriate to bring them into the space or not? That's, that's a maybe. Um, transitioning time, you know, do you need a, like a buffer zone? When you are stepping out of a relationship, a time where you are not going to engage with other people, you know, unless you both agree clearly that now we are going to have a transition time, otherwise this is it. You know, the moment you break up, that's a clear cut. That's it. I'm no longer in a relationship to, with you. This is today. Tomorrow, I might get married with somebody, and it's your freedom. Once you reclaim that freedom, I think that the the, the transition or uh, zone, this buffer zone, uh, you know, don't post pictures of yourself with your new lover, you know, stuff like that. This is all like maybes, you know, it's not something that is required and on top of that it cannot be controlled. You know, if your truth is to be in love with somebody else the day after you break up, this is it. It's not something that can be controlled. Um, flexibility, yes. Of course, truth, yes, be in your truth, be be in, uh, in alignment with what feels right to you, totally. Um, other values, you know, for instance, sensuality. Is it okay to share sensuality with your, your ex, for instance, even stay lovers? Yes, that's a maybe, you know, it's a possibility. Sometimes you might stay lovers with, with your ex and keep on having sex sometimes for an extended period of time. And, um, you know, maybe this is going to change the moment you have a new lover coming into the field, but sometimes people stay in intimacy after they, they break up and they keep on seeing each other and still being lovers because there is something there that nurtures them and that they still enjoy. So it's a, it's a maybe. Um, boundaries, yes, you know, you can have boundaries and respect those boundaries for yourself and for, for your partner. Um, Honoring the past, yes. Releasing control, yes. This one is a very important one, you know. The moment you are no longer in a relationship with a person, all the rights that you had are being taken out, okay? They are removed. You have no longer the, the, the agreement that you had of being of a certain transfer of power or certain concessions or, you know, um, all that is gone. All that is removed out of the picture. And so, yeah, the idea of uh, releasing control is very important. You have to let go. You have to, if you have an attachment to wanting to control your ex, that's probably going to create lots of tension in the field and it's not something that you necessarily want. Um, taking responsibility, yes, very important one. If you look at the past relationship and what you have been doing, and also in the transitioning time, in the uh, conscious and coupling period, then look at, look at your dynamics. Look at what you do and the way you create and generate and attract certain things to happen in your life. Be wise, expand, yeah. You know, those are the positive ones. Then you have other things, other values that you, I think are really uh, dangerous and challenging to bring into the conscious and coupling experience. You know, one of them is aggression, retaliation, escalation, blaming, stealing, harassing, you know, all these qualities, I would say, well, if you bring them in, in the conscious transition, then that's going to be pretty toxic, you know, in, in, your, in what is left of your, your couple. So um, it's not going to create safety and it's going to make it very, very difficult to relate to each other. So those qualities of aggression and retaliation, escalation, blaming, or, uh, you know, harassing your ex, you know, all that stuff is like, that's the place where you can really grow and expand. And uh, if you engage into any of that, again, it's your choice, do it consciously, but uh, you might have to deal with the consequences. That's it, the same, you know, demanding, being demanding, or emotional threats, all that stuff is like, no, the control is gone. You know, you, you have no right to control that person's life. So. Uh, consciously raising control is one of the things that I encourage you to deeply anchor. This is a long discussion, okay? I could have a video of an hour on just that, you know, giving you specific examples. And I think that this, um, anchoring those core values is one of the core, you know, conscious and coupling experience that 
that you can go into. When we think of conscious uncoupling, this is it. This video here, what I'm giving you here, the conscious anchoring of uh, core values and deciding how those values are going to play, what are going to be the new agreements between you and, uh, and your ex, this is the place where you can really grow and expand and when there is, there is, where there is new awareness that can come in. Yeah, beautiful.